Hi, this is a video update on our SL Google Mapper project. Uh, this is what we got to uh, last time. We've got uh, Google Maps showing up in uh, Second Life. I've got standard Google Maps controls. For instance, I can zoom in. I can zoom back out again. I can turn the uh, satellite imagery off. And I can turn the satellite imagery back on. And obviously I can also uh, pan around the map. And the other thing I was able to do was also to display an RSS feed. So here we fetch the uh, BBC News RSS data. Uh, the problem here is that each of the data points is shown as an icon as it is in uh, Google Maps. The problem is because the Second Life browser doesn't currently support interactive web pages, we can't actually click on any of those markers to get the information. So in this version 2 of the Google Mapper, we've uh, rectified that. So if I just uh, ask the display to uh, start showing markers, and if I now replot that particular newsfeed, then you'll see it actually displays a little cone, a Second Life object, in each of the locations. And if I zoom in, the registration at uh, this scale of map is not brilliant, uh, but the more we zoom in on the map, the better the registration gets. If I want to know what these cones represent, uh, I can ask it to uh, show me all the labels. And instantly I get all of the, uh, the headings for each of the news stories displayed. If I actually want to read one particular news story, then I can click on it and it will then go and fetch the relevant web page, in this case uh, the BBC News page. Obviously this is shown in the browser um, that is within my client, uh, so nobody else around can actually see that web page. If I want to show other people the web page, then all I do is uh, select show URL. And this time, if I click on the web page, then we'll see we actually get the whole web page displaying instead of the map. And in fact, if I had uh, a set of repeater screens around the edge of the map, then I'd be able to see that information as well. Um, if I just click on the page, it reverts back to the map display. So that gives you an idea of how the system works at the whole Earth level. Uh, what we're now going to do is just clear the existing set of markers. And we're now going to zoom in on the Birmingham city centre. I've got a preset loader here. And we've managed to find a RSS feed which had the geocoded data for various websites around Birmingham. So I can bring that information up. And you see we've got a whole cluster of uh, cones showing up around Birmingham. Uh, but let's just zoom in. And zoom in again. And you'll notice that as we zoom in, actually all the markers get moved and the spacing for each marker uh, gets moved as well. So we're actually still getting them in their right locations. Here we are getting down to a fairly uh, fine amount of detail now. Let's just move the map across. Maybe zoom in once more. And pan across once more. And just as before, if you actually want to find out what uh, those markers are, we can ask it to uh, show us all the labels. And we can then use the in-world camera controls if we want to zoom in. So for instance, we see here, we've got uh, details of flat for sale, uh, details of National Sea Life Centre. Um, so we can click on any one of these links and load up the web page and here we have information, places to visit on the National Sea Life Centre. Also here you can see there's a marker for a flat for sale, again click on that and pull up information on that particular flat. And just one final uh, little trick to show you, if we uh, zoom back out uh, let's go back up to the uh, whole world view. So we've zoomed out to uh, the whole Earth view. I'm just going to bring up that display of uh, BBC News information again. And what I'm going to do is now is I'm actually going to overlay another data set. So I'm going to turn uh, Multiplot on and I've got a feed here of uh, a proposed itinerary across the roof of the world. And we'll notice it displays all the new markers. And then just to make it nice and clear, it actually changes this new data set to a different colour. And realistically we can support sort of as many data sets more or less um, as, we, uh, as we want to, each automatically assigned to a new colour. And hopefully that gives you an idea of where we are with the Google Mapper project.